Hi, this is JNM with a new Unity tutorial about 2D game character animation. But before let me announce two courses on Udemy made by Blackthorn Broad for creating 2D games with Unity, you learn how to animate 2D characters and also how to create your own sounds by using free tools like Audacity. Then he shows how to use sprites to create health bars and menus and finally a nice introduction for coding the logic of your 2D game with C Sharp and Visual Studio. The second course is similar, here you can see how to create 2D game characters with Photoshop or other painting applications and then again how to use these painted characters in Unity for developing your 2D animations and after completing the courses you will be able to make a cool 2D action game with Unity even if you are a total beginner to game development. The links to the courses can be found in the description below, check them out, they are really amazing and I can highly recommend both. But now let's start my 2D game character tutorial. Ok, this is Photoshop CC and I painted this a bit sad looking character. I merged this to one layer. Because I don't want to do a cutout animation where you have the different parts of the character on separate layers. So I stick here to one layer, then I use the crop tool to crop the borders. And now be careful to not save this file as PSD, save it as PSB which means large document format, ok? That's very important, I will explain this when we import this guy to Unity. Ok, so I jumped to my Unity project, this is Unity 2019.2 beta and we have a default 2D project and I set my camera to auto graphic and now we have to install some packages using the package manager. Here you can see the packages and the preview packages are included because we checked this show preview packages in the advanced settings. So if you don't see these packages 2D animation, 2D PSD importer or 2D IK, check this option. And when you see it then install exactly these three packages, 2D animation, 2D IK and 2D PSD importer already install the 2D IK package, but it will be used in the next part of this tutorial. Ok, once this is done, we are ready to import our character. The PSB file, just drag it into a folder of your project, I created a folder called images and here you can see the imported asset with a sprite lib. On the right side, in the inspector, you have to set the sprite mode to multiple and then there is an option called character rig that you set to true. Ok, after that you open the sprite editor and then you can go ahead and adjust the boundaries of the sprite. I increase the size a bit and change the position and then I press apply and go to the skinning editor. In this editor you can add the bones to the character to create the rig that you will need for the skeletal animation. Ok, so we start by creating the first bone, you choose create bone and click to define the starting point of the bone, then you drag the mouse and click again to define the end. And each time you do this you create a new bone. Ok, but now we don't want to start from this point, so we have to press the escape key or the right mouse button to end the chain. We want to continue from this bone, so I select this by pressing the left mouse button and then we have a kind of transparent bone that indicates that this new bone that we are creating now is connected to the previous bone. We need this because we want the bones of the eyes to be moved or rotated when we change the translation of the yellow bone, right? And this is why we connect the bones. The same thing I do for the feet, I select this red bone then again we have this transparent bone that shows that these bones are connected. And the last bone is for the right foot and that's it, the rig is created. After that you can edit and move around the joints, these are the points where the bones are connected. And if you like you can also define names for the bones, I do this here for example for the feet. Ok, the next step is to create the geometry, the 2D mesh for the character. First I select auto geometry and then you can define the detail of the outline and the subdivision of the mesh. I set both here to 50 which I think is a good number and then I press generate for all visible. And here you can see the generated mesh and when you go to preview pose you can already 
animate your character, you can rotate the bones and the mesh will follow. And it did a quite good job, but we can optimize this, what we are going to do right now. The first optimization is to create a better or a sharper outline for the mesh. So we're going to add some more points to the mesh and match it with the outline of the character. So we have to define where we need more points and where we have to split edges. So I choose split edge and then you just hover with the cursor over the edge that you want to split. You don't have to click, just hover with the cursor over the edge and then you get a new point that you can move around. It takes a while to get used to it, but once you have it, it's so comfortable and nice. Okay, I do this a bit faster now because it's all the same process. And once I'm finished, I select Edit Geometry to move around the points for which I want to adjust the position. Alright, the points are split, now I choose Edit Geometry and then I can move around vertices or edges. Ok, that's it, I'm happy with the 2D mesh, I press Apply and then we come to the last optimization and this is adjusting the weights. So what is the weight of a bone? Well, this is the area of the mesh that is affected by the bone's transform, ok? For example, when I rotate the bone, you can see the body is affected here like that, which is a bit too much in my opinion. So I go to Weight Brush and now I can change the weight for each bone. So with the bone selected and the mode Add and Subtract, I can add or remove weight for this selected bone. When I want to add weight, I press the left mouse button down and draw over the area for which I want to add the weight. And to subtract weight, I also press the left mouse button but have the control key pressed as well. And this takes a while till you get used to it, but it's a very powerful option. Ok, now I'm happy with the rig and the weight painting, I press apply and the character can be used now in the Unity game engine for creating real 2D character animations. And you will see it is very simple, I just drag the character into the scene, when I select the camera you can see a preview, the background color is set to a grey tone and after that I go ahead and create a very simple idle animation. You can create the animation in Unity now because you have the bones of your character that you can rotate, scale or move. And you can do this with the rig of the character that you dragged into the scene. Here you can see me rotating the bones and I can even move a bone. Or you can scale it, for example to create the impression that the character is breathing. Ok, so I select the character in the hierarchy and then open the animation tab to create a new animation. I call this animation blue character idle for example. And then go to a point in the timeline to create keyframes. To do this you select the bone and then rotate, scale or move it. Then you can either add keyframes manually or you enable recording of keyframes. And this means each time you change the transform of a bone, a keyframe is added to the timeline at the point of the slider. I speed this up now a bit and add keyframes quite randomly to the timeline. Ok, quite nice or good enough for this tutorial, then I copy the first keyframes and paste them here into the timeline to define the end of the animation that can be played in a loop now because the first and the last keyframes are the same. This is not a very professional animation, this is just to demonstrate how to use keyframes and the bones of the character. Alright, now I increase the time of the animation by selecting all the keyframes and drag the end frames to the right. 
Oh, but I see I accidentally removed a keyframe from the last frames, so I again copy the first keyframes and paste them to the end again. You can copy the keyframes by pressing Ctrl and C, and you can paste them again by pressing Ctrl and V. And I think the animation looks quite nice for this short amount of time that we invested. Okay guys, I hope you like this short 2D game character skeletal animation introduction. If you have any questions, then please add these to the comments. And as I said, the links to the courses made by Blackthorn Broad are added to the description below. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for supporting my videos and my channel and I see you on JNM.